First and foremost, shout outs. One to Les from Minnesota. We were playing at uh, MGM the other day. Uh, definitely seen him before, first time we spoke, and he told me he likes the videos. Also, Leon from England. We were playing at uh, Bally's uh, same night, and he asked me how the uh, vlogging had been going. So glad you enjoyed the videos, Leon. And to the Red Rock dealer who said, uh, rice is made for forks, homie, which I respectfully disagree with. Uh, pretty sure same dealer who uh, told me how much you liked the Keep Track videos back in September. I don't go to Red Rock often, but you didn't deal my table either day, September or last night. So not 100% sure, same person, but I think so. Giant Connect 4 board in Mandalay. Looks like a lot of fun in the uh, music, live music bar area over there near the garage. First, not a video about deal making at the final table of a tournament. I don't play tournaments, I don't do that but it is about deal making and poker, so stay tuned if you want. In Mandalay right now, about to play, but an interesting thing happened a few days ago at Mandalay that uh, made this deal making opportunity possible. You have to stay with me here, there's a few promos going on. One is an hourly high hand. Quads is the qualifier, you only need to use one card, and it rolls over. It was at $1,200 at the time, between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. Also, there are high hands that you hit, you get paid instantly. Um, quads and better. For this quads though, you need a pocket pair. Both cards have to play and it has to be a pocket pair. That's $100 and you just get paid right away. You don't have to beat anything. So at 3.04 p.m., someone hits quad sixes on table one. And only one card plays, so he doesn't get that $100 for the quads bonus, but he is on the high hand board leading the way for the 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. hour for $1,200. When it gets close to 4 p.m., um, the floor says, you know, last hand. There's no countdown on a monitor or anything. The floor says last hand. And a guy at that same table hits quad queens with both cards. That's an interesting aspect we'll talk about later. No one knows if the hand began before 4 p.m. or not. They need to go to surveillance. Okay, so the floor calls surveillance and whoever wins is gonna win. Either quad sixes guy is gonna get $1,200 or quad queens guy is gonna win the 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. and get the $1,200. But there are a few moving parts to this. Quad sixes guy, it's all or nothing for him. He either doesn't win and that's it. He doesn't even get the 100 because he only used one card. He will not get the quads bonus for $100. So he's either losing and getting zero or he did hold up and when 4 p.m. ended, he was the winner. The queens happened afterwards, in which case he gets all 1,200. Quad queens guy is in a different situation because he either wins the 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. time period, gets the 1,200. He is guaranteed the 100 for hitting queens with a pocket pair. Even if he loses the 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., his hand didn't happen between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m., he's still getting his $100 for hitting quads with a pocket pair, and he'll be on the leaderboard for 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Now, the money will reset to 200, but he'll be the leader, and there's only three tables going, he'll probably hold up. So while we're going to surveillance to figure this out, it benefits both parties to make a handshake deal. Now, the floor is gonna see who wins and pay that person, but these guys can make a deal and you know exchange some cash however they want. So they do make a deal, uh, they're gonna split the 1200. Whoever gets paid officially, that guy is gonna give the other guy 600. Okay, but I don't think they factored in everything else. Quad Queens guy had a much better worst case scenario because even if he risks it and loses, he's getting 100 and he'll probably get the 200 in the next time period because who's gonna beat Quad Queens? So his worst case scenario looks like $300 anyway. So they made the deal. Quad Sixes guy got 600, Quad Queens guy got 600, plus the 100 for the quads bonus using a pocket pair, and he was on the leaderboard afterwards. So Quad Queens guy had a lot more uh, leverage in this negotiation, which he did not utilize. I think he could have said, like, give me seven, you take five. And the other guy facing possibly zero or a guaranteed five, I think would have taken it. Uh, quad Queens guy looked like he was going to get 300 anyway. His Queens ended up not holding for the 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., but the 100 was guaranteed, and they just made a deal 50-50. So I was at the next table, and I heard some of the negotiations as they were happening, and then when my table broke, I went to that table and talked to Quad Queens guy about it. It looked like he didn't leverage his uh, better position in the least, but just something to note that um, those situations don't happen 
frequently, but they didn't consider the uh, $100 payout that Mr. Queens was getting, guaranteed. They didn't make a deal on the 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. money. I think uh, Mr. Sixes could have also said, you know, if you hold in the 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. hour for $200, let's factor in that money as part of the deal. Split that 200, 100, 100 also. Maybe uh, Mr. Queens would have went for it, maybe not, but it looked like all they were thinking about was the $1,200 and not the other two aspects to this that uh, Queens, Mr. Queens stood to gain from uh, regardless of what happened with that 1200 So they said officially uh, the sixes did happen the sixes was the only hand that happened between three and four. Uh, the queen's hand started at 4.01 p.m. So if sixes risked it, he would have gotten all 1,200, and queens would have gotten just 100. So, uh, looks like Mr. Queens made a great deal, but I think he could have even negotiated himself a better deal out of it. Yeah, I got, I got it at the stadium. Amen.